our busy world, family time frequently gets neglected. It is vital that we give attention to our families while we can, and it is especially important to give attention to what God says in His Word about our homes. For the next few minutes, let's join Scott Pauley as we open the Scriptures and find God's message for your family. God's Word is so rich, so real, so wonderful, and every time you go back to it, the Holy Spirit of God Himself begins to make application to our lives right where we are. The last time we studied, we began walking through my favorite book of the Bible, full disclosure. My favorite book is the book of Philippians. But we've returned to it to discover how to have a joyful home. Would you like a home that overflows with the goodness and glory of God? That doesn't mean that every circumstance is always perfect. It doesn't mean that we are perfect, but it means we have found God's perfect joy. And like the psalmist, we can say, our cup runneth over. Would you like a joyful home? We learn, first of all, from Philippians chapter 1, verse number 4, the very first occasion where the word joy is found in this book, uh, that it is connected to praise and prayer. We must learn to thank God for our family members, and we must learn to pray for our family members. That's a good entry point because... When you learn to thank God for people and pray for people, it helps you keep a right attitude towards them. You can't stay angry, aggravated, and annoyed at people that you're praising God for and praying for. Prayer and praise will give you God's attitude towards other family members. But let's go further. Walk on through the book of Philippians. Come down in chapter 1 to verse number 18. The Bible says, What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. These are the next occasions where you find some form of the word joy in the book of Philippians. And uh, Paul says he's rejoicing. Wonderful. He must be sitting on a beach somewhere, just taking in the sunshine and loving life. Actually, he's sitting in a prison cell. He's sitting in jail. He is dealing with difficulty Uh, that most of us could never imagine, and yet in the midst of all of that, he's rejoicing. So here's a second principle. If you want a joyful home, not only must you learn to praise and pray, but secondly, you must root your joy in what really matters. Paul is not rooting his joy in circumstantial things, in physical or material things. No, those are all temporal. He's rooting his joy in the eternal. He's rooting his joy in the spiritual And if you want God's joy to fill your home and your heart, if you want God's overflowing gladness with your family, then do not root your joy in things that come and go. In fact, everything in this world comes and goes except for Jesus. In verse number 12 of chapter 1, we learn not to root our joy in what happens to us. Because in verse 12, he said lots of things that happen unto him that were not pleasant, but they had fallen out rather to the furtherance of the gospel. So don't allow things that happen to you to be the source of your joy. In verse 13, he teaches us uh, that it should not be our location, where we are, that makes us happy. He is in bonds, in verse 13, literally in prison. Some people think if they just have a geographical change, they'll be happy. No, because you're going to carry you with you to wherever you go. So a change of scenery is not the answer for spiritual difficulty. Then in verses 14 through 17, it's not what others do. Because in verse 14, 15, 16, and 17, Paul said some people are preaching Christ of contention, trying to add affliction to his bonds. They're uh, they're just trying to make it harder on him. So if his joy is rooted in people, he's going to be one disillusioned person. No, do not root your joy in what happens to you, where you are, or what others do. Root your joy in what really matters, and that's Jesus Christ. And the fact the word of God is being given and the work of God is going forward and the will of God is going to be accomplished. You want a joyful home? Then learn to root your joy in the right things, specifically in the Lord Jesus. And then come down to verse 25 and 26 of chapter 1. Here's another. The Bible says, In having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your furtherance and joy of faith, that you're rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Did you notice that the joy here is connected with the good of others instead of ourself? Paul's in prison, but his joy 
uh, his rejoicing is connected to their joy, uh, to their faith growing, to them being helped. So here's a great principle. If you want a joyful home, be more concerned with the other person's joy than with your own joy. Do you know what is the greatest joy killer in the world? Selfishness. Self uh, crops its ugly head up all the time and uh, seeks its own, uh, consumes. Uh, That self-life is the most miserable life of all. (laughs) I was thinking about this earlier. Would you like to have a good marriage? A good marriage is the union of two dead people. You got to be dead to self. Both of you have to be dead to self. It's it's not about what I can get. It is about what I can give. In the words of another verse, in honor preferring one another. And so make your goal, your desire, that others would know the joy of the Lord, that others would have a glad heart, and in that you will find great gladness and greater joy. And then let me give you one more. If you want a joyful home, not only must you praise and pray, not only must you root your joy in what really matters, not only must you be more concerned with the other person's joy than your own, but then, number four, you must learn the joy of true oneness. We've come now to chapter 2. Listen to chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. This is really just an extension of what we said a moment ago, being more concerned with another person's joy than your own. But listen to the connection here of joy and oneness. He said, I want you like-minded, one accord, one mind. Every good thing God ever does in a church comes when God's people get in one accord. You find that all through the book of Acts and all through history. Well, every good thing that God does in a home happens when we learn the joy of real oneness. And God describes here, when he describes the mind of Christ in Philippians 2, and defines for us what this oneness looks like. It looks like humility. It looks like sacrifice. It looks like obedience. You see, joy is not rooted in how you feel. It's rooted in how you think. That's why he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Somebody said, how do you get everybody to think the same way? (laughs) You don't. The answer is you never get everybody to agree on everything. So here's what you have to do. If you want oneness, oneness is not all of us thinking exactly alike all the time or agreeing on everything. Oneness, rather, is us learning the mind of Christ and learning to agree with Him. Look, oneness is not me getting my way or you getting your way. Oneness is Christ getting His way. We may not always agree on everything, but we can all agree on this. We need Jesus. We want the Lord to have His rightful place in our life, and we want to begin to think like he thinks. This is what oneness means in a home. Would you pray today that instead of being fragmented and divided, God would make you of one mind and of one accord? You know, it's not just families that split up, uh, marriages that split up, uh, that deal with division. Many people live under the same roof, but they live with division all the time. If you want a joyful home, learn the secret of oneness with one another by learning the secret of oneness with Jesus Christ. My prayer for you, dear friend, today is that these principles from Philippians will become a living reality in your life and that you will have a joyful home. We hope that you will spend some time talking with your family today about these truths from God's Word and spend time praying for each member of your family. You may find additional podcasts, helpful articles, full-length Bible messages, and other resources at enjoyingthejourney.org. Until next time, may God bless you and your family.